guys, welcome back. Today I have quickly sewn up one of the many, many snowballs I plan on making. Uh, so this is an in-the-hoop design. It can be done in a 4x4 hoop, which means everybody that's got an embroidery machine can do it. And I also talk about you can probably make a face out of felt, and so you could make something similar. Um, so if you'd like to see how I made them and I talk you through the whole process, please stay tuned. So I am obviously going to be doing tutorials on the snowballs, but the when you download the pattern, it doesn't actually come with any instructions or anything. So what I did was I stitched one out to see how it was going to stitch and the layers and everything. And so now what I'm going to do is I've cut like two mil wider than the stitches, as you can see there. So I'm just going to use this as my pattern to create an actual cutting pattern. So I'm just going to trace around it uh, on a scrap piece of paper. This is actually cut off the edge of one of the pattern pieces that I was printing and prepping. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut around or trace around this and then cut this out. Not with my good scissors though. Um, and then this will be my template to cut and make everything. Now I'm pretty sure by the way that the stitches are, you can actually make this whole thing in the hoop. However, I am just going to be doing the embroidery part on the hoop and I'll do a video on that. And then we're going to stitch them together with the sewing machine. So if you don't have an embroidery machine, you could actually put these on like with felt shapes. So you could just do like two black buttons for eyes, or probably not actually, because you're going to throw them. Uh, so do two black felt eyes and then a felt nose and you could either glue them or stitch them on. Um, so you could still make these without an embroidery machine. This is also done in a 4x4 hoop, which means that all embroidery machines can make these. So, now that I've got that, and I've got my pattern, I'm going to get my red scissors, which were over there. I should have brought them with me, but whatever. And I'm going to cut around this. Now, I will most likely be um, laminating this when I do my next round of laminating. I'm not going to turn the laminator on for one little piece like that. It just feels excessive. Uh, but I do have some more laminating to do this weekend to prep for next week's videos. So now that I've got my template, I can now come and waste a lot less fabric because I can put these up against each other. And then I'm just going to draw around them with a pen because the idea is, is that you're going to cut to the inside edge of your pen mark so you won't see this. And then you can line them up. So it's my belief that we're going to need four, but I'm going to cut or trace five so that I can also put one in the embroidery machine for you guys to watch it stitch out. Because I'm not I'm not going to mute the noise on it, so I'm going to explain why I'm skitch, skipping certain stitches and stuff like that. So I... I will get quite, so I only bought half a meter of the fleece. Uh, it was pretty cheap. I think it was like $7 a meter. So it cost me $3.50 for this piece of fabric. In fact, it might have even been on sale and cheaper. I'm not sure. But you could also use flannelette or fur, but fur is obviously more expensive. Uh, this is the fleece. You could just use anything kind of soft, really. You could use minky if you wanted to. Um... I'm going to stop there because I'm going to make a heap of these so that my husband and my child can play snowball fights because it'll be fun. So then I will just come along. I'm just going to cut one for now. But the idea is, is that I will cut a heap of these and get as many in. I'm assuming that it's going to take four. It feels like it's going to take four. All right. So now we've got that. I am going to hit pause, get my hoop and some stabilizer and hoop stuff. I need to hit pause. It was just off camera. I just wasn't looking hard enough. So this is just a piece of um, tearaway stabilizer that I have cut off for an A5, uh, a 5x7 hoop, but that's fine. I can still use this. It's not a big deal. So I'm just actually, I'm going to hoop in the corner so that I get the most out of this. This isn't expensive. I think it costs me like Oh, about a dollar fifty a meter because I buy it in such a bulk way. I buy like a hundred meter roll. So I'm just going to hoop that in by itself, and then I can tear off that excess. Um, you can not tear it, but I like to because it gets in my way. 
And then I'm also going to chop off this bottom bit because I don't need it there and it's not big enough to do anything. So that is now rubbish. It will go in the bin. Um, so I'm just going to hoop just that, but I'm going to take the piece that I cut out and we're going to go over to the embroidery machine. Now, so I've, I've already loaded the design into the machine. We're just going to do the same one again. So I'm going to put my hoop in and then I need to go um, back to the first design. So hold that thought. I've just got to reload the design so we're back at the start so that we can go from the get-go. Now it's going to say to stitch the edge shape first. So I'm going to put in white because I don't want to see these stitches and white usually shows up everything. So I'm going to put white in and it's going to stitch it out. So it, it's literally going to stitch this shape for us so that we know where to place this. want to you can use some basting spray uh, just make sure you pre shake it up and then I'm just going to do like the tiniest little squirt because I don't see this moving much now we should have cut this just slightly bigger than the actual shape so now I'm just going to put it down and stitch again So it's just going to catch the edge. Now, again, if you wanted to, you could actually um, cut this much larger. You could add like an extra half an inch. See that? It just missed that then. So I'm just going to pop it back under. So this hasn't tacked all of it, but it's tacked enough that it's going to stay for what we need. Now, the next stitch is going to be the black. So it does the eyes and the face first, and they are combined as one design. My child's watching Minions, so he will just randomly have outbursts of happy, and that's okay. Okay, so that's going to stitch out. Um, it says it's only going to take two minutes. But that's usually two minutes of stitching, so the jump stitch and cutting will usually therefore make it take a little bit longer. Um, but my machine cuts the stitches so I don't have to go and do it manually, which I really enjoy. And there's obviously a whole bunch of different faces that come in this kit. Um, so it was $10 USD, which worked out to like $15 Australian. But it's going to look amazing, so it's worth it. And you get more than one face. I'd be a bit, I'd be a bit shocked if I was paying fifteen dollars for just the one face. But because I think I get six or seven different faces in the snowball set, that's going to make it really fun. I'm going to make two of each and then have sets for the boys to throw at each other. Alternatively, you could have all like you could do sets of five or ten and have the same face on all of them so you know whose is whose especially if there's going to be arguments that would be a good way to kind of do that so I definitely haven't picked the quickest design I could have just picked the squiggly mouth and that would probably be quicker because of all the jump stitches in the circles but that's okay it's the only one I've loaded onto the USB Um, so I'm using, this is actually, actually I don't know, that's Hemingworth Black and Isocord White. I have all different brands of embroidery thread. And then I've got Madeira Rayon and the colour is 1278 for the carrot nose. So basically it's just a really bright, happy looking orange. I have many shades of orange, but this is the one that was out already for a different project I did. So I'm going to use that one as well for this time. definitely taken longer than my machine has guesstimated but it is only an estimate it's smart it doesn't have to be a genius it's fine 
And normally I would fast forward this, but I kind of want to explain things as we're going. Okay. So my machine, as you can tell, makes noise to tell me when it's time to go and put a new color in. I need to work out how to change those noises. I wanted to make it funky noises because I'm ridiculous and I think it'd be cool for it to yell at me. Not in an abusive way, but just, yeah. Anyway, so now we're going to do the nose, which again says it's only going to take one minute, but I don't know how much I believe that. So what it does, it does like an edge stitch and then it comes and does, not a fill stitch, but like a, a bit of an underlay, which just helps to stabilize where it's going to stitch. Um, a lot of bigger designs will usually have an underlay stitch. It just helps it from puckering and carrying on really. So now technically there is two more um, phases to this. So the first one comes along this edge here. So I imagine you would then get your next piece of snowball and put it there. And then the stitch after that, oops, hold on, push the wrong button then. The stitch after that comes over to this side. So if you've already got a bunch of these cut out, you could actually put them in the hoop and it would do those three. But I would like to stitch it on my machine just to show you guys that you can make this without the embroidery machine. So we're going to now go to my embroidery uh, to my sewing machine. So I have my face, which I've just torn out of the stabilizer. Uh, if you want to, you can come and trim these like uh, tails off because I'm all about trimmy tails. But in saying that, they're going to be inside a snowball. So it's probably not a big deal. So... I'm going to start with my face right side up and then I'm going to put this one literally on top of it and stitch just one of the edges. So I'm going to use a quarter of an inch seam allowance, which is probably going to make them a little bit smaller than if you did it in the hoop, but I'm okay with that decision. And then I'm going to pull it out. Now I'm deliberately using a different colored thread so you guys can see more what I'm doing because white on white is like black on black. It's not fun to stare at. All right, so then I'm going to open this up and I'm going to put the next one in. So you might start finding that because of our seam allowance, this may not fit perfectly. If it hangs a little bit off the edge, that's okay. Like at the top and the bottom, just try and make it evenly hang at both edges. So then again, I'm going to come around to here and make sure I backstitch at the start and the end like that so now we've got this so then we've got our fourth one so i'm going to stitch all the way down one now you may want to use pins if you're new to sewing chuck some pins in i'm going to do it just to show you um i obviously don't really need the pins but it's also not really the point is it so you can just come along pin along always make sure that the ball of the pin is sticking out and never push your pins all the way down like this because the head gets in the way of your sewing and they're also harder to pull out so if you're one of those people that refuses to sew over your needles or your pins that's totally fine world's your oyster do what you want um but if you pull them out by having the heads out a little bit it's going to make it easier to be able to get to them as you come up to them, right? So I can take it out as I'm going. If you don't want to run over them. I usually do. Because it doesn't bother me. Alright, so now we're up to the last side. But obviously if we stitch that shut, we can't turn it out and we can't stuff it. So I'm actually going to leave a gap in the middle. 
And I, I'm doing it there because it's going to be easier to sew up than if you leave it at an edge. So I'm going to put in two pins and these are going to be my start and stop points. So I'm going to squish this down out of the way, start at the top with my quarter inch seam allowance, back stitch, come down to the pin, take the pin out and then back stitch to lock that in. And then I'm going to do the same. So I'm going to flip it over so I'm starting at the top, working my way down towards the pin, and then get to the pin area, and then backstitch. Now, because we've done a quarter inch seam allowance, there will be no need to trim any of your seams. They are going to be fine just the way they are. So I'm now going to turn it through the gap. Look at our cute little ball. It doesn't look like much of a ball yet, but that's because we need to stuff it. Now I am just using um, something called Hobby Fill. I bought this at Spotlight. Yeah, they come in different sizes. I actually bought it because I want to do a dragon stuffed animal. I've bought the pattern. I will probably get around to it and I will probably video me doing it and royally screwing it up, but that's okay. Um, I even went and bought all the joints and cool eyes and everything for it. Um, it's a simplicity pattern dragon, and it's the way it shapes, it sits on your shoulder, so I could walk around with a dragon on my shoulder. I just think it's cool. Um, so I want to stuff these pretty well to help it keep the snowball shape. So I'm just grabbing like small-ish handfuls at a time and then stuffing it into the hole. And I'm pushing on those seams to make sure that they're going to sit out and be nice and rounded. So I don't want them too firm that they're going to hurt when you throw it at people. But I also don't want it too empty so it's going to squish down and lose its shape too quickly. You've got to kind of find a happy medium. So you want to stuff it in pretty well, but not so firm that you can't squish it in your hand. So I'm going to just put this last little bit in, and I know that looks like a lot, but it squishes down to like basically nothing once you push it in there. So this is going to be the last little bit that I'm putting in. Like that. And then I'm just going to kind of squish it, make sure that I'm happy with the amount of stuffing, which I am. And so now I'm going to take some white thread. This is overlocking thread, but we're hand stitching, so who cares? And my needle, which flukishly was easy to find. I did not prepare that earlier. That was just how I threw it on there. So I'm going to thread my needle. And because these are going to be thrown and squished and played with by boys and men, I want to double the thread over so that it's extra strong. I didn't need to use a um, the thick thread that I'm using. This is bag making thread. I could easily just use the normal sewing thread to sew these together. I was just, to be totally honest, I'm trying to sneak this in while my child's distracted with the television. So I'm going to join up the ends. And so then I'm going to make a loop with two fingers so it's big enough like that. And then I take the tail and I'm going to thread it through the loop five times. So one, two, oops, three, four, and five. And then I'm going to pinch those twists and pull the knot as far down as I can to the bottom. Now that one did not work out quite as well, but I think it's because my hands are nowhere near me. But I've still got a nice big knot there. So then I'm just going to trim off those tails. And so now I'm going to sew it up. So the first thing I want to do is I want to start on the inside and push outwards because that's going to put the knot on the inside where I'm not going to see it. Haha, <laughs> not going to see it. Get it? Didn't realize I was doing that. And then I'm just going to, on the inside edge, I'm kind of just going to grab a little bit like that. And I'm going to stitch along, but I'm going to try and do the inside edge so that my stitches are invisible. Now, you don't have to do this. You could quite easily just whip stitch over it. Uh, but this is going to make it more invisible stitching. I can't sew like that. So I'm going to come back over here. 
So you just want to do small little stitches close together and I'm doing them on the inside lip so that we won't see them. Not that we'll really see them anyway, it's white on white. You can also try your hand at zigzagging from one side to the other. I can usually do never, never do more than about two of those before my fingers hurt from pushing it through that much fabric. But This is also a thicker fabric than what I normally hand stitch. So you may want to not do the zigzag from side to side, which is totally fine. Now my stitches aren't obviously totally invisible. I'm rushing this and I also don't know that I care that much. And I know that's a crappy thing to say, but my child and my husband will not know. Like if I fluff that a little bit, obviously we know where the stitching is. But they're not going to look at that and be like, oh my god, it's hand stitched. They're not going to notice. So now that I've done that, let me come back over here. To tie off, I did this in the shirt video, but I'm just going to do it again because lots of people don't know this. So I'm just going to stab into a little bit of fabric like that. And I'm going to push the needle most of the way through. And then I'm going to put my finger against the needle and wrap this five times. So one, two, three, four, five. You may ask why five and not six. And the answer is six turns into a knot before you want it to. So then I'm just using my, basically my fingernails to keep the twists down close to where I want them so that they're going to end up forming a knot right at the fabric. And then I can just trim off the tail. Right, roll it up in a ball, make it more ball-like, and there you go, a snowman ball. So I will be making as many as I can out of half a meter. Uh, if you're in my Facebook group, I will let you know how many that turns out to be. But that was like a really quick project. It's fun to do, especially um, we don't have snow where I live, ever, actually. Um, it's summer for Christmas here. So this is like a fun way to still get to play with snowballs. I don't know. I like them. I think they're cool. Um, I will put the link to my Facebook group and to the pattern in the description box. So yeah, uh, if you decide to make these, come and show me. Um, you obviously can't post photos on YouTube, but you can come to the Facebook group and show me what you've done. So yeah, I hope that was helpful, guys. Um, until the next video.